Hey, welcome back to Barley and Hops. Uh, we're, we're here again with another video, and what we want to cover today is we want to cover a little bit of science, but really it's sort of like that, you know, home kitchen test to make sure that you're doing the right things, or that you want to convince yourself that you've done the right things. So we've got a test laid out for you. Um, and I'm going to show you all about this. Now, you, you know that uh, we've discussed converting starches into fermentable sugars in many of our video series. You know, and I always explained about if you're using a flaked product or an adjunct, you normally need a grain of some sort, a six row or a two row, um, so that you can convert those starches into your fermentable sugars. Uh, but we've never really covered, well, how do you prove that that happens? I mean, why should I just listen to George anyway? I mean, why should I just take it at face value? Well. There is a way to test for that, and, and I'm here today to actually show you that. What I want to do is I want to prove to you that, uh, and I want you to be able to prove to yourself that all this does work. So let's get started. First of all, you know, you can use a flake product, which is, I use flake corn. Um, believe it or not, cornmeal works extremely well, too. Uh, cornmeal, you can pick this up at your local uh, grocery store. I paid like a dollar four cents for two pounds of this, but it's really, really fine powder, so you've got to find a way to get, you know, put it in a bag that way you can remove it a little bit easier uh, but it'll get all sticky now remember when you use uh, amylase and, and you've got your pot going at 155 degrees and you pour this in and you get it all mixed up and it's sitting there steep and you'll notice that it'll be pretty thick like a porridge uh, once you add your amylase which is like one and a third teaspoons of uh, amylase uh, and you put that in there and you let that set over about 30 to 45 minutes when you check it again, you know, because you mix it every once in a while, when you check it again, you'll start to notice that it'll liquefy, uh, that it becomes real, real thin. So that's the, the sacrification portion. Yeah, see, there we go. We're using the big or the, the technical terms. But really what it is, it's that amylase is converting that starch into fermentable sugars. So it becomes real, real thin and real liquidy. Um, and the same thing happens with the flake uh, corn or the cornmeal and whether you're using just amylase uh, or if you're using a grain to go alongside of it. You, you'll notice that it'll be real thick and clumpy to start with and then, then it just start to loosen up a whole lot. So it'll be very, very noticeable to you. But here's our test. Now, what we do know is we do know scientifically that starch uh, can be identified visibly by using iodine. And so I've gone out and I've got some iodine tincture here, and I, iodine tincture. Uh, I purchased this at Walgreens for like three forty or something like. That. I mean, you can get them a little cheaper somewhere, but just regular iodine. And what I've got set up here is uh, this wonderful test. Uh, you can do this once, or you can do it more than once. But look, if you take a potato, and as a matter of fact, let me get the camera set back up so that you got a really good close-up view. Okay, here we are. Um, this is the uh, iodine tincture that I picked up at Walgreens. Uh, I got a little dropper. Uh, you don't need to get a dropper, but I got one just because it's kind of neat to use. Now watch what happens when I put a drop of this iodine on this potato. You'll notice how it immediately starts to turn black. Well, that's the color that indicates, that indicates that there's starch there. And we already know that there's starch in a potato, but that'll prove that iodine actually does work. So we've got starch in there. And you'll notice the longer you let it set, the darker it gets. Now it'll turn black. Now there's a scientific reason for that, but that's not what this video is about. Just to let you know that this actually does work. Okay, so I'll put the potato aside. I've got a small glass of just water. And if I drop it in there, you'll notice that it just dissipates and it turns the color of the iodine, which is just like an off orangish color. Now I've got another glass, a similar glass with water in it. Now I actually put corn sugar in this one. So I want you to see what happens when you do that. The same orangish color. So evidently corn sugar doesn't have any starch in it, which is what I had anticipated anyway. So I'm going to show you that. Now when we get to these other ones, um, I took out a, uh, a mash that we were doing earlier of the, the corn and uh, the barley, and this is what I come up with. So I mean, this is before it starts to do its enzymatic action at 155 degrees. Look what happens. Look how black it turns. And it turns black almost immediately, and it'll remain black when you, once you shake it up. So that's what happens. Uh, so it indicates to me that there's starch in that. Now here's another one with the cornmeal. 
Well, the same way. Look how black it turns. And oops, yeah, and it, it'll stay black all the way through that. But, so there you go. You know that there's starch in there. Now remember, uh, you know, this is clear now. There's no starch in that. That's the uh, corn sugar. And this was the uh, water with corn, with uh, just water. And again, this was your potato. It's black. Now, uh, the last one we check here, now this is one that we just did a uh, couple minutes now, about 30 minutes ago, we finished up a video on uh, making a corn mash. So this is the corn that's left uh, that we had actually uh, let set for almost an hour and uh, at 155 degrees with the grain in it. And look at what happens here. No black. And when you shake it up, that black tends to go away. So, uh, or, or the color of the iodine goes away. So what that lets me know now is that I have converted all of these starches into this fermentable sugar. Isn't that amazing? This is only just, just a real easy way or quick way for you to uh, validate in your own mind that using this process actually works. Now, that's a great science project for you and the kids maybe or for you and your friends when they come over. You can kind of show them what actually has happened. Uh, you can take them step by step. Uh, of course you're going to spend that whole hour uh, with it steeping. Uh, and again, you can either add amylase or you can add uh, when it comes like three or four pounds of corn, they use about a pound and a half or two pounds of grain. So that's what I offer to you right now. Now let's talk about one other thing. Uh, I'll get reset up here and we'll talk about one other thing real quick. Okay, we, now we've we done our, our test for, you know, starches and fermentable sugars. Again, you know, here's my starch, here's my fermentable sugars. Um, this is water with uh, corn sugar in it and this is just water. So, uh, and again, here's the potato. Now, um, this also deserves an explanation because someone, some may ask, well, you know, granddad used to always use corn, you know, he let, let it sprout, you know, um, and I mean, he didn't have to add anything else to it, and you're absolutely right. Here's what happens in a nutshell, okay? When you say malted barley, the maltster, which is the guy who does this, uh, very carefully, and, and, and they, they kind of know what they're doing, that's why we let other people do that, and then we just buy the stuff. But they allow the seed to germinate to begin germination. And at some point in time, they halt that germination through a drying process. Uh, now, it's the same thing with corn. If you put corn in a burlap bag and wet it, it'll start to sprout. Well, when that happens, the endosperm inside that grain or inside that kernel of corn will start to change. And then what it's actually doing is it's changing to, in order to convert itself and its starches into fermentable sugars. So, and it also provides that uh, uh, alpha amylase. So what the mulcher will do, the mulcher will stop that. So that's why your grain, and these are really small, that's why your grain has a diastatic power, which is the enzymes necessary to convert its own starches to fermentable sugars and others that you add with it. Uh, so that's what this is. This, this is am amylase. It's just been removed from those. With corn, that is sprouted, when it's finished sprouting, you rub off the sprouts, you can crack it up, you can grind it, but it's already ready. You don't have to add anything to it. But if you use a fresh corn or another fresh product that hasn't sprouted, so it's unmalted, well then you've got to find a way to convert those starches into fermentable sugars. I hope that explanation makes sense to you. So the next time someone asks you, well, why did granddad never have to use grain? But now you know the answer. And look, if you got a question, if you want to see another video or something else, just let us know. I'm George. Thanks.